To begin our multi-video analysis on Spy Kids 3D, let's take a look at our protagonist, Juni Cortez. Juni is easily led along by others. Often his own wishes and motivations get overshadowed or outright overruled by the wishes of others, and he doesn't have the courage to be able to stand up for himself in these situations. In the beginning, we see Juni has attempted to regain some control over his own life by leaving the OSS, but he is all but forced to return in order to rescue his sister. This is the only moment in the entire movie where we see him desire something and make a choice to pursue it, even if it is almost coercive in nature. In fact, it's entirely possible that the OSS allowed Carmen to be captured so they can use her as leverage to bring Juni back into the fold. We sent her inside to shut down the game, but um, she disappeared. She got as far as level four, then nothing. Why would she even go in there without any backup? Because her first and only choice wouldn't answer our calls. So she decided to go alone. The OSS could really use you. Yeah, use me. Not what I meant. You control the youth, you control the future of the world. More on this in another video. Beyond this one moment, however, Juni is constantly led along or even manipulated by others. Juni is roped into the whole game mess by the OSS, gets sent to the moon as a practical joke by the beta testers, is pushed into the role of the guy despite his protest. No, wait, I already told you I'm not the guy! Go! Okay! And is basically a third wheel by the time Carmen joins the party. Now where are we going exactly? Where's level five? First of all, you don't ask the questions around here. I do. In addition to his lack of agency, he's constantly saved by other characters, and all of his victories feel hollow and unearned. Grandpa does most of the heavy lifting, while the toy maker constantly gives him power-ups and pushes him to the end. In his fight against Arnold, he's completely crushed. I don't want to crush Junie. He only survives because Demetra quote-unquote sacrifices herself. Demetra also allows him to win on two separate occasions, during the Mega Race and the Robo Arena. Even his crush on Demetra is really only the product of the toy maker's manipulation, not something Juni realizes and pursues of his own will. The Demetra situation is very complex, and it gets very interesting when you start contemplating whether or not Demetra has free will, but that will be a story for another time. All this is made even more obvious when he's thrust into the leadership role of the guy after he wins the Mega Race. He's clearly uncomfortable with being a leader, and it's honestly kind of absurd that the beta testers even still follow him after he demonstrates total ignorance of the game time after time. They only begin to suspect him right before the end. I think Junie's the deceiver. Thematically, this goes along very well with the Toymaker's plot. The game as a whole is a farce, created to trick the OSS into freeing the Toymaker. The fact that Juni is not only manipulated by the antagonist, but everyone else around him, is very potent and serves to reinforce the themes of manipulation. I think Juni's story would be a lot nicer if he was actually able to stand on his own two legs from time to time. There's nothing wrong with him relying on others, but he's constantly used by others against his will, and worst of all, he's aware of this problem. The OSS could really use you. Yeah, use me. Not what I meant. Unfortunately, his attempt to regain control of his life didn't last very long, as the emotional blackmail from the OSS was enough to get him back in their clutches. In almost every scene, he's roped into doing something he doesn't want to do. Be it returning to the OSS, getting sent to the moon, participating in the mega race, posing as the guy, fighting Arnold, and even dealing with the toy maker. Even Grandpa hides his true motivations and goals from Juni, and doesn't tell him what they are until after he's already freed the toy maker. This likely has less to do with wanting to manipulate Juni and more about avoiding conflict, but it's noteworthy regardless. Interestingly, Juni acts out some deceptions of his own. When elevated to the leader of the party, he hides his goals of shutting down the game from the beta testers and pretends to just be trying to get to the end of the game. It's not entirely clear why he thinks that the beta testers would try to fight him on this, as I'm sure they would join his side if he just told them that the toy maker is trying to take over the world or something. Let's take an in-depth look at a specific scene early in the movie. Juni is in line to purchase the game when he finds himself facing an ethical dilemma. But there's gotta be some things more important than games. Oh, and then we mentioned the surprises the Toymaker has in store for those of you that complete level five. 
untold riches, toys, and prizes beyond your wildest dreams. Hey, no cutting in line, freak. I wasn't cutting, I was standing right here. End of the line. Needless to say, things have been pretty lame since I left the OSS. <laughs> ah! Things were about to get worse. This scene does an incredible job at conveying the entirety of Junie's character. He's easily swayed by others, as just seeing the logo from the charity is enough to get him to donate, and the advertising was enough to get him to decide to go back to the line. He barely protests when the kid won't let him back in line, and then something terrible happens to him for no real reason. This scene is also pretty brutal. It brings up the suffering of others and points out the privileges that so many of us enjoy and take for granted, but when Junie has a moment of empathy and considers donating, he gets punished for it and is left hurting while no one is helped. It also kind of sounds like the kids in line are laughing at his misfortune, which only makes the whole thing sting even worse. It almost would have been better if he just focused on his own well-being and ignored the charity, because at least then he would have a fun video game. Now he gets nothing. Telling kids it's safest to be selfish doesn't really seem like a great message to put in your children's movie, but interestingly, this meta issue is actually explored by the movie itself in a later scene, which I will cover in the Toymaker video. If Spy Kids 3D wasn't a movie made for children, I would expect a Junie would be a lot like Shinji from Evangelion. Shinji is also constantly manipulated and used by others, and never really seems like he wants to do what he does. Whereas Evangelion focuses more on the mental anguish that Shinji endures, Spy Kids 3D doesn't really explore the way Junie feels about his situation, and prefers to leave the viewer to slowly realize the degree to which Junie is being manipulated and deceived. Now, on the bright side, Junie's disposition also reinforces the themes of family, which the movie really likes to hit you over the head with. Junie relies on the help of others in order to make it through dangerous situations, and that can be wholesome at times. Perhaps Junie works as a sort of unifier for people, which is a fantastic leadership skill, even if he doesn't realize it. The guy's speech before entering level 5 sums it up nicely. Nothing is unwinnable. If we join together in battle as one, we plan each other's strengths and help cover each other's weaknesses. We can accomplish anything, and we will accomplish everything. But first, let's go whip this unwinnable level and show it who's boss. Are you with me? Yeah! Thank you for hearing out my thoughts on Junie. Let me know what you think about him as a character. Any interesting observations or character moments I missed? Let me know down in the comments below.